It's, it's all about winning. If we don't win enough games this year, I'll go from being untouchable to be one of the first guys fired next year. But I, I think we've got a really good team. I, I think we're going to play well, and I, I think we've got a chance to win another conference championship. And I, I don't see any problem with us becoming – our coaching staff becoming some, some of those guys like the other ones that are on the hot seat. That was Rocky Long on Friday. Coach Long relaxed and ready to go come Monday. Well, things aren't nearly as jovial. They have to get down to business. Camp officially underway, meaning – that's the uh, time to start repeating as Mountain West champs. It's job one. Coach Long reflecting on the differences, though, between this year's roster and the roster of a season ago. Day one last year, we were much better. Okay. Because we had uh, seven guys out there that were seniors that are in NFL camps right now. I'm not saying that we won't be just as good before the season's over. I think this team has that kind of potential. We're living up to the expectation from the guys last year, and I think... We have some athletes this year that can really step into those roles. we got to see we're going this camp, and I think we have the opportunity to be better than the team last year. We're inside the three-week launch window for Season 19 of the Prep Picks Can Report. Ready or not, we light the main engines Friday, August 25th at 1030 sharp. To get you in the mood, we start with our resume with our training camp previews. We go to the South Bay. Mar Vista won the South Bay League title last season. We'll look to build on back-to-back eight-win seasons. The Mariners return only four offensive starters this season. So they'll rely on seniors Mike Munoz and Nico Figueroa in the trenches on both sides of the ball in hopes of defending their title. I've been playing since I was a little kid and I've been dreaming of this moment and, and now that it's, it's, it's totally real. So it's definitely a big honor to get to go and come out here and, uh, and lead these guys. And hopefully, you know, hopefully hit the playoffs and see what we can do. It's not all about, oh, go do this, go do that for me. It's, no, we'll do it together, we'll finish together and just be a team. Staying in the South Bay, up next, Montgomery. The Aztecs finished second in the Metro Pacific League last season. And we'll try to build on that with new transfer quarterback Olympian from Olympian, Hunter Joseph. Joseph played running back in S strong safety with the Eagles, but now with his new team, has made the switch to quarterback. Meanwhile, Leon King will be the man in the middle on the defensive side of the ball. And everybody says they're better up front. It's a big impact because I, from Olympian, I came playing running back and safety. So switching to quarterback is a big impact. I have to be a leadership, a leader on the team, make sure everybody knows their basic steps, and bring the team together. Uh, I think it's very important because our school isn't used to winning a lot. So winning the league this year would like get a lot of people back to supporting the football team more. Meanwhile, the Bishop Knights remain under the helm of Joel Allen, and they moved from D3 to D2 after a 14-1 season a year ago. 18 returning varsity players are led by senior quarterback Jeffrey Jackson. The Knights looking at this new year as a clean slate with new opportunities. One, we're all best friends. We all hang out at lunch and after football practice, uh, after games, we all, we're all we're just one team. Passionate about the game. Everybody loves football. A CIF championship, same as last year. Moving north, Oceanside coming off an 8-3 season and a trip to the Open Division playoffs. They'll always be playing with the memory of Pulu Pumeli in their hearts and their rich history in their heads. I think it's just our motivation to carry the tradition, not only for Coach Pulu, but for everybody that came through here. I think it's our job to just continue the tradition of winning. I think we play every play hard for each other, especially for Coach Pulu. El Camino is coming off a three-win season. For Jerry Ralph, that's not nearly good enough. He wants to get the Cats back to the winning ways that they enjoyed under Herb Meyer and such. There's a slight pressure from the entire city to bring the greatness back, but it's just the fun times of just living out our high school days and just playing for each other, because truly we want to win for each other and we want to put another title back up on that board, just like back in the Herb Meyer days. Granite Hills will be a young team in 2017, returning only two starters on each side of the ball. Coach Kellen Cobb and his Eagles will be looking to build on a 7-5 campaign that saw them reach the D2 quarterfinals just a season ago. Uh, we're doing good. I'm the only returner this year for the offensive line, but uh, if we can play hard together, then we'll do some damage this year. I think we worked hard during the um, offseason, getting ready for the season. Yeah, it's a great opportunity to show these younger kids uh, how and when and what it takes to uh, um, win league. 
And staying in East County, the Foothillers of Grossmount are coming off a pretty good season. They were 9-2 a year ago, made it to the Open Division quarterfinals. Head coach Tom Carlo has something to work with. Four starters on both sides of the ball are returning. Camp is just work hard, just get in shape as much as we can because, you know, we run a high-tempo offense, no huddles. Man, it's, it's really fast. It's really fast. <laughs> it's really fast. Uh, a lot of new guys coming in, got to bond with them. I think that's important to start with. I mean, I wouldn't be out here if it wasn't for the chemistry or the bonds you make between the guys. And before we leave the prep pick sports, Saturday I was up at Torrey Pines for their fundraiser. I've been going to this event for a long time. I always bring Tim Gaughan with me, and it was a special year for Tim and me. I'll tell all the other people at KUSI, he's tenured, so uh, he can't be fired. But back in the basketball season, Tim was covering a basketball game for us, and he got hit in the head by a basketball, one eye closed. And so he went to the emergency room to, to deal with it. And I got a call the next day, and I thought, okay, he's going to miss work, and we were in a hectic schedule. And he said, Paul, the eye's okay, but they said, I have leukemia. That was, what month was that, Tim? Uh, that was the, um, December 29th. December 29th. And, man, it, 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 that, that, that changes your outlook when a good friend uh, tells you something like that. But he said, I'll be ready in time for the football season. Could you give a round of applause for... <laughs> Way to go, Tim. And one other programming note to pass along. Skateboarder, uh, skateboarding icon Andy McDowell will be in studio Tuesday. Mac will be our 545 conversation. He'll be talking about Grind for Life. That's a cool uh, f foundation. It provides financial assistance for cancer patients and their families who are dealing with the high medical bills. And he's always good company, so check out the fun Tuesday, 545, right here at KUSI. We also have a pair of golf guests coming your way. PGA Championship soon to tee off, and we'll, so we have golf on our mind, which brings us to our next story. Oh, by the way, it's Don King and Chris Riley. 156 golfers are teeing it up at the San Diego Country Club in the U.S. Women's Amateur Championship. One of those golfers has already spent a lot of time on the KUSI airwaves, Sam Pasquale. Squall's alum, Hallie Moore, sharing the stage with our Mike Milburn some years ago, but she's not only the only local link to this year's tournament. Matt Gilson has our story. The U.S. Women's Amateur showcases the very best of the next generation. That includes 21 countries, 29 states, and six San Diego natives. It's a little bit different because I have so much family here in town. I had probably 15 people watching me today, um, and sleeping in my own bed is definitely nice. I was so excited when I saw this tournament was going to be in San Diego. A couple years ago, I saw it on the schedule, and I wanted to qualify. It was great to see some of my coaches and some friends out here watching and supporting and having my family here, both my parents, for the first time at the tournament. It's, it's great. It's great that I'm able to showcase San Diego while while I'm out here and to be able to show all my friends that, hey, this is what San Diego is about and we have tough courses too. If you've ever watched the pros hack their way around a U.S. Open course, you know the USGA loves nothing more than giving golfers a challenge. And they're not exactly taking it easy on the amateurs this week. The pins were in tough positions today. You had to put it in the right place. Greens are rolling fast as they usually are and that's what makes the course really tricky. Yeah, the greens are definitely really hard. Um, they're really undulated, a lot of slope. You need to read a lot of break. Of course, if you just stick it next to the pin, you don't have to worry about all those pesky greens. Yeah, I was rolling pretty good. I mean, I was also hitting it pretty close to the hole, so I didn't have to put that far. Haley finished the day with a five under 67, giving her a share of the day one lead. I've been working a lot on consistency with my iron, so. Hopefully I can get a little prox session in today and then tomorrow I'll keep hitting my irons good. From San Diego Country Club, Matt Gilson, KUSI Sports.